Hello, everyone. My name is Colleen McGinn, I'm one of the directors of regional engagement in the Office of Alumni Relations. On behalf of myself, the Office of Alumni Relations, and Kath Borgman, director of the Career Planning Center, I'm happy to welcome you to tonight's webinar, How to Build a Real Career in a Virtual World. At this time, I would like to remind everyone to please make sure your microphones are on mute. There will be time later in the presentation for you to participate if you wish with some live Q&A and any questions can also be submitted through the chat feature, which we'll be monitoring throughout. I would now like to introduce tonight's speaker, Claire Chandler, class of 1993. Claire is a business growth and strategic leadership advisor and president and founder of Talent Boost. She helps ambitious companies scale painlessly by finding and fixing performance bottlenecks. She aligns executive leadership around a unifying vision that attracts and retains the right talent to accomplish the company's mission. Claire leverages over 25 years of experience in people leadership, human resources, and business ownership to boost leadership alignment and effectiveness. She has extensive expertise in organizational effectiveness, executive coaching, leadership development, communication strategy, employment branding, succession management, employee onboarding and engagement, talent infrastructure, and strategic planning. Her highly interactive and engaging facilitation style fosters the learning and commitment of diverse audiences, both small and large. In addition to her bachelor's degree from Fairfield, Claire holds a certificate in strategic HR leadership from Cornell School of Industrial and Labor Relations and a master's degree from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. She is the author of The Whirlpool Effect, Inspire the Flow That Boosts Company Performance, and co-author of Leading Beyond a Crisis, A Conversation About What's Next, both available on Amazon. Claire's clients include BASF, Johnson & Johnson, Covance slash LabCorp, CSL Bearing, Sikorsky Aircraft, Echo Recovery Solutions, and Blue Phoenix and Ashco USA. To learn more about Claire, you can visit www.clairechandler.net. And now I turn tonight's presentation over to Claire. Thanks, Colleen. Thank you for that great introduction. You, I barely have to do anything now. You kind of took care of everything. Um, I, we've been, uh, I've already been chatting with some of the, the guests here, just asking where people are from. And we're gonna dive into that a little bit more in a couple of minutes, but um, I, I'm, I'm so used to doing these things live in person in and in a room with everybody. So I kind of miss that interactivity. Um, so I hope that everybody uh, does do what Colleen had suggested and, and get very active in the chat. Uh, I want this to be as interactive as possible, but without further ado, we can kind of get started and get uh, jump in. Um, a little bit of my history. I am a very proud Fairfield grad and uh, I don't, hold anything back. So I will admit that I'm a class of 1993 grad. Um, I lived in Jogues, Gonzaga, and uh, senior year was in Townhouse 111. I hope it's still standing. Um, I once won a t-shirt at a karaoke contest at the Sea Grape, which we just called the Grape. And uh, somewhere in there, I was also uh, editor-in-chief of the uh, Mirror and uh, OMG that hair, right? Um, I got in trouble from time to time with the administration for what I wrote, but you know, that is the life of a journalist, right? But once a stag, always a stag. You will see that in the background behind me. I am such a proud um, graduate. I, I miss my college days. Uh, you can tell because obviously I still had copies of the mirror. Um, Thomas said class in 94, so you were right behind me. We probably know each other. Um, all I can say is I'm so glad I went to school before social media. So I'll just leave it at that. Since graduating uh, Fairfield in, in 93, I worked for close to 20 years in corporate America. I was everything from a writer and an editor, a department manager, a people leader, a recruiter and a trainer. And my most recent uh, role in corporate was as a, uh, an HR executive. And I've worked everywhere from communications, marketing operations, customer service, and human resources. And since 2011, um, I have been a consultant and a business owner, and Colleen already bored you with, with my details around that. Um, not that you were boring, Colleen, but my details can get a little bit tedious, but I appreciate the intro. My, my mission, and I do work with leaders and companies, um, to help them attract and retain the right talent, but my mission is really to end workplace misery. So if you're looking to get lined up with the right job in the right way, with the right environment, uh, I'm glad you're going to spend this, this hour with us. 
Um, when I share some of the things that we're going to go through tonight, I'm doing that from a, from a variety of perspectives as a, as a candidate, as a hiring manager, as a recruiter, um, and most recently as an advisor to, to leaders and companies who are trying to find the right talent to help them advance their mission. So that's kind of my, my background. Your background, we've got um, people who signed up for, for spending this hour with us, spanning six decades of alumni and parents of Fairfield uh, students and grads. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool and I wanted to share that here. And you're logging in from all over the country because let's face it, what else are you gonna do on a Thursday night when we're still kind of in, in uh, under restrictions during a pandemic, right? And when uh, you signed up for spending the hour with us, you were really open with um, giving us some of your input on what it is that you're looking to do. So some of you are looking for your first job. Some of you are looking to re-enter the job market. Uh, some are contemplating a, a mid-career change. And some are looking for a new challenge during your retirement. Um, so there's, there's such a diverse um, background from all of you in terms of where you are, where you came from, and what you're looking to do next. So let's have some fun tonight. You agree to spend an hour with me. I'm spending an hour with you. I don't want this to be a monologue. I don't want this to just be me telling you about how to format a resume. Um, I am going to touch upon that because, of course, I'd be remiss if I don't give you some of those basics. But really, you're here to learn how to build a real, uh, a real career and stand out as both a candidate and an employee in this virtual environment, because that's where we are right now. You want a real job, but the companies and hiring managers and recruiters you're dealing with, they're largely trying to find you, get to know you, and decide if you're the right fit, all in a virtual environment. And we know that eventually, if you get along the process far enough, you're going to do some sort of an in-person round. But a lot of these early steps in getting noticed, your, your networking, your personal branding, even your first round interviews are, take, are, are taking place these days without meeting in person. And there are a lot of candidates in the market right now. So tonight I wanna to talk about how you can stand out in this virtual sea of candidates because what may seem like limitations in this virtual world can actually give you a much broader and deeper reach into the companies and roles you wanna be part of. So I am gonna share some basics about how to punch up your candidate materials, but I'm also gonna give you some insider secrets on how to differentiate yourself from the other candidates who are out there. And like I said, I don't want this to be a one-way conversation. So if all of that sounds like uh, you know, a worthwhile way to spend the next half hour, uh, hour or so, I want you to start interacting right here. You've already started to share where you're, where you're uh, hailing from, when you graduated. If this is something that you want to learn more about tonight in the time we've got together, drop a heck yes, a yeah, a hell yeah, if you want to, right into the chat. Let me know that you're out there. I'm going to feed off of your energy. I, like I said, I don't want the, ah, oh, love it, love it. I don't want this to just be a, you know, a, a one-way thing. So we're going to have some fun. Um, I promised Colleen that I would not drink wine during this hour. So I need you uh, to keep your attention. I need you to keep my energy. So use that chat, plop in some questions, provide some feedback, share where you're stuck. Um, like Colleen said, if there are a couple of people that you know bring up something that you're really struggling with and you wanna be brave enough to come off of mute and have a, a quick conversation with me, we can, uh, we can do that too. So here we go. Okay, so if you really wanna build a meaningful career, you need to understand the two keys to your success. And there are two traits that every genius level performer possesses and demonstrates. There's just two. The first one is self-awareness, really understanding what your true talents are, why you're motivated to use them, and how you tend to use them. And, this, whoops, and the second one is authenticity. So once you're more self-aware of all of that, what you're good at, what your genius zone is, really stepping into that, stepping into your strengths and your style and letting your uniqueness out. And here's the good news. Anybody can acquire those two traits. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about those two traits a little bit later tonight, but if you stay until the end of the workshop, I'm gonna tell you how you can unlock both of those very, very quickly. So make sure you stick it out till the end. Okay, so speaking of the end, let's start with the end in mind. 
to me, mission clarity is so important. It is what I focus on with every one of my clients. It's the very first step that I take leaders and their companies through is to get really crystal clear on what it is they're trying to accomplish. So I want to take a couple of minutes right off the bat to really um, push you to become more self-aware because that's key to not just landing a job, but landing the right next job for you. So I want you to give some thought to what the next role or career step is that you would love to take, right? What would you love to take? I want you to get a very clear picture of that in your mind. What does it look like? What type of company are you in? What are some of the things you're working on? What skills are you using? What's the working environment like? What does the culture look like? The people that are around you that you get to work with? Is that picture starting to get a little bit clearer for you? Anybody want to be brave enough to drop, to, to drop a couple of those thoughts in the chat? What are some of the things that you're looking to do that you would love to work on and get paid to work on as your next job? I can almost hear you typing furiously. I'm going to give you a few more seconds to see if there are some brave souls who are going to drop a couple of thoughts in the chat. Awesome. So Thomas wants to innovate new projects, new programs, new ways to grow a business. That's great. That sounds pretty fun. It sounds like something that not everybody can do, um, which is awesome, right? Because part of part of finding your genius zone and playing in your genius zone is it's a zone that not everybody can play in. So that's a that's a great example. So keep going if you guys want to drop a couple more of those thoughts in the chat. I'd love to see um, you know what what it is that you're looking to do and incorporate into your uh, into your next step in your career, and it might be your first step for some of you. Stephen wants to get to think outside the box. Yeah, you know, Stephen, one of the things that um, when I worked in corporate, and by the way, when I finished Fairfield, I swore I would never work in corporate America. It just didn't seem like the right place for me. My, my roommate went into banking. She's a very successful um, VP in a, in a large bank. Um, and I always remember like, you know, when, when they would bring the recruiters onto campus and they did the interviews, she always had to get very buttoned up into these, you know, these these really conservative suits and all that. I'm like, man, I would hate to have to do that. And then sure enough, I ended up in corporate for, for close to 20 years. So you learn pretty quickly never to say never. Um, and I love corporate. I mean, you know, but the, despite some of the box that you do have to play in, you learn a lot, you get a lot of best practices, you learn a lot of structure. Jim Book wants to assist people every day, but have a flexible schedule. Jim, I think that is a very attainable goal especially in this era of COVID. It's not even the year of COVID. I think we all need to be realistic um, and accept the fact that we are, we are in a new era which has permanently changed the way that companies look at how they get work done, which I think is a silver lining in all of this because it opens up some opportunities to do work um, you know, where, where you are, where you reside, where you're most comfortable, where you are most productive. So that's a great one. Kristen wants to create, facilitate, and manage inclusive and fun events or experiences for a wide range of attendees. Ooh, that sounds right up my alley, Kristen. We should talk about that sometime. Might have some ideas for you on that. That's great. Oh, these are great. Keep them coming. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the next one, but keep these coming. These are awesome. Okay, so you have a little bit of, of that mission clarity in mind, right? Like I said before, if all you wanted was to find a job any job, then this would be a really, really short workshop, right? I would tell you, spell check your resume, go on Indeed and apply to every single opening until someone hires you. But that's not why you're here. You wanna build a real career and it's not that kind of numbers game, right? It requires a different level of care. So now that you have a little bit more mission clarity around the type of role in the company that you wanna pursue next, now it's time to do a little bit of research. So. Thinking of a couple of sites 
um, that you like for finding job opportunities. And I'll give you a quick uh, recommendation. It, in terms of job boards, as a recruiter and as a candidate, my go-to job board has always been Indeed. And let me just tell you, I'm not a paid spokesperson for Indeed. They don't give me any sort of you know, advertising revenue. I just happen to think that it is a, uh, one of the most robust job boards, but there are certainly a lot others out there. Um, I know we've got at least one person here who's looking for an accounting opportunity. There are uh, more finance and accounting specific job boards um, and you can look on Google and, and find a number of those. But in terms of a general job board, um, I, Indeed gets my, my top vote. And then LinkedIn, you have to be on LinkedIn. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that when we talk about your candidate materials, but even just looking for opportunities and networking, which we're gonna talk about next, LinkedIn is the place to be. So when you look for some of these job opportunities, part of the research that I want you to think about doing is going on Indeed, going into the jobs section of LinkedIn, going into other job boards that you feel comfortable with and look for job descriptions that appeal to you, right? Some of the ones that, that start to align with this mission clarity that you that you kind of just worked through um, that, that really sort of uh, resemble or give you some opportunity to do some of these genius zone areas that you were, you've were you been sharing in the chat. And you wanna highlight the keywords from those qualifications when it comes time to preparing your candidate materials, right? Because part of this is you wanna align your, your brand so that it's authentic, right? Authenticity being one of those genius traits, but you also wanted to get the attention of the people that you want to hire you. So you wanted to use some keywords um, from their, their job descriptions. You also want to do some research around the companies that interest you. So there may be um, specific companies that jump to mind immediately that either they're local to you and you happen to know that they have a good reputation. Um, they are, you know, uh, uh, kind of world changers and, you know, you want to work with them. Um, but find companies that interest you. Go on their website, get to know their mission, what they value, and of course, potential opportunities. Stephen also added, um, as part of his mission clarity, helping others use digital media to make a difference. Ooh, I love that that's so tech savvy, and yet you focus on impact. Stephen, I want you to copy and paste that line that you just typed into whatever notes you're taking through this, this workshop, because that's the kind of line that's gonna be an attention grabber to the companies that you want to attract. So definitely make note of that. Um, questions on just the, the, the research side of it, I am gonna keep moving ahead and, and we can go back and, and I'll answer whatever questions you post. Um, but it's really important before you just sort of jump in to you know, start applying to jobs, the shotgun approach does not work, especially in a market where there are a lot of other candidates out there. So you wanna do this homework, it's pretty important. Okay, so once you have these bits of information on hand, you've gone through a couple of job descriptions, you've started to highlight some keywords that appeal to you, that align with your genius zone and your mission and the things that you wanna do. You've started to look at a couple of companies and done some research and found out um, you know, those whose mission resonates with you and again aligns with you know things that you would like to be part of now it's time to network and networking is not a dirty word i know a lot of people hear networking and they go oh my gosh i have to go into a big room of strangers and talk to them no you don't not anymore welcome to the virtual world so it's all networking especially in the time of of covid the era of covid everything is about networking so here are a couple of things to keep in mind Look again on LinkedIn, and we're going to talk about LinkedIn, um, you know, in terms of your candidate materials, but take a look at LinkedIn from a couple of perspectives, one of which is there are so many groups on LinkedIn that are um, specific to your um, region of the country, your, um, you know, uh, function that you want to get into. So accounting, for example, or, or digital media or event planning. I just want to check for a second because I thought I heard somebody. Did somebody come off mute and ask a question? Nope. See, folks, when you get older, you start to hear voices. Okay, so you want to look for relevant groups. 
um, you know, specific to your function. Uh, Fairfield has at least one alumni group. I believe there are several, right, right that are uh, function specific. There are job opportunity groups. So there are literally groups on LinkedIn that are all about networking to find and share job opportunities. So looking at those groups, join as many relevant groups as you can, because it's going to help um, get you noticed and get you uh, in front of and connected to people that are going to help you move your career along. You also want to reach out to your social networks. So I'm talking your LinkedIn connections, your Facebook connections, especially. Let them know your goal, right? So going back to that mission clarity, where you're, you're a little bit more self-aware of what you want to do and what you can offer to, to an employer, there is no shame in this game, right? So reach out to your network and let them know, hey, folks, here's what I want to do next. Who do you know? What opportunities are out there? Who can you introduce me to? Take a look at some, some of your trusted connections on LinkedIn, um, especially on LinkedIn, because it is the, the professional networking um, site and see who they're connected to. That research you did on companies and job opportunities, very likely you have somebody in your network who either works at that company or knows somebody at that company. So you wanna to start to reestablish um, a connection and start to have some conversations with those people in your network, but let them know what you're looking for, right? You can't, you can't find what you're looking for if you're the only one in that sea of candidates. You've gotta let other people know and help, uh, help you look. You also want to, um, we're going to talk about applying to jobs in just a minute, but when you do apply, again, the power of LinkedIn is there are millions upon millions of people on LinkedIn. And chances are the hiring manager, the recruiter, or even a higher level decision maker is out on LinkedIn. So once you've applied to a position, go and find some combination of those people. Um, usually it, when you're in LinkedIn and you're looking at a job opportunity, it will show you who the recruiter is. Um, and sometimes if you're connected to them, it will show you that. If you're connected in a, a second degree, so in other words, you've got a mutual connection, it will show you that. You want to tap into that. This is all networking. And again, it's not, it's not groveling. It's not begging. It's not cheating. It's really extending your network and making those connections to make sure you get the right attention of the employers and the opportunities that you want to pursue. The other thing you want to think about doing is, let's say that there's a company that you found that you really love their mission and you really feel like deep down, that's a place where you could make a home and you could make an impact. But currently they don't have a job opportunity. Um, either they have no opportunities advertised or they don't have an opportunity that aligns with your skill set. I have this, I'm going to call, I dare say, I'm going to call it magic, a two step message formula for connecting to them. So, what you say in an outreach message to, uh, on LinkedIn to request a connection, and then what to say them, to them immediately after that to, uh, to hopefully open up a conversation. I'm not going to spend time on that today because I want to keep this moving. But if you are interested in grabbing that magic formula, just send me an email. It's claire at talentboost.net and I will give you that magic formula. Okay. Just check the chat real quick. Okay. I don't see any questions coming in yet. So I'm going to move on to the next topic. Okay. So you've got a little bit clearer on your mission. So your self-awareness is up a little bit higher. You started to do some research and you're really starting to open up all of your possible avenues for networking. So now let me cover a couple of the basics. So when you talk about your, when I talk about your candidate materials, I'm talking about your resume and your cover letter. Those are absolute basics, but it's really about your personal brand, right? So it goes far beyond your resume and your cover letter. We're talking about your entire virtual footprint. So resume and cover letter first, they both need to be well-written. They have to be absolutely free of spelling and grammatical errors. We are people of Fairfield. We don't have typos. And it's clean and it's in a professional format, both the resume and the, and the cover letter. That's basic. Um, if you've been using an objective statement at the top of your resume, get rid of that. We don't do that. That's been out for years and years. What's, um, I'm not even going to call it trendy, but what's been very effective at the top of your resume is a headline and a, almost an executive summary. 
that really kind of highlights who you are and what you offer. So when you're doing kind of your mission clarity, um, you know, uh, Steve, in that line about helping others use digital media to make a difference, that's a great line to incorporate into the summary at the top of your resume. Um, some of the key strengths that you have, some of the, and, and written in the same terms as some of the job descriptions that have been appealing to you during your research phase. So, you know, again, it's about aligning um, your candidate materials to the opportunities and to the companies that you want to, to take notice. A um, couple of other basics for every work experience that you list, you wanna focus on accomplishments, not tasks. So it's not about a laundry list of, you know, what you were responsible for doing, but what did you actually achieve? How did you impact the company in a positive way? Where possible, if you have specific numbers, percentages, results, number of people you manage, et cetera, you wanna be as specific as possible. Quick thought about the, the cover letter. You wanna customize it so it's relevant to the company, to the role that you're applying for, and to the key qualifications that they're looking for. And again, you wanna show alignment, right? So you wanna show how what they're looking for matches up with what you offer. Now, you don't have to start from scratch with every single one. There is a way that you can kind of templatize that and have mostly standard components of your cover letter, but you wanna make sure, you know, recruiters and hiring managers, a lot of people don't use cover letters anymore. And there's this big debate over whether they are useful or not. I don't know any recruiter who is turned off by, uh, by an inclusion of a cover letter, but I know several recruiters who say, all else being equal, if they didn't take the time to put a cover letter in there to kind of summarize for me how what they offer fits what we need, I put them aside. Again, this is a very high volume candidate market and you wanna to try to stand out. Um, I'm gonna tell you to be social, but not stupid. And uh, what I mean by that should be fairly obvious, especially on, on Facebook and, and Instagram. If you have any photos of you doing, do people do keg stands anymore? Don't even know. But if you do have photos of yourself doing any of that, um, partying a little bit too hard, looking in any way out of control, unless your next job is as chief chaos officer, I would be really careful about um, not tagging yourself in those types of photos. Does it mean you have to go completely vanilla and totally sanitized in your in your social presence? No, but many, many recruiters are now researching you as much as you're researching their company. So be smart about your presence on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, don't know if you've noticed, but it's a pretty polarizing political climate nowadays. So even being careful about um, kind of being terribly outspoken, um, you know, in the political sphere can tend to get you negative attention when it comes to recruiters. So be, be, be careful about that. LinkedIn, of course, is absolutely um, a, a bare bones requirement in your candidate materials. I don't care where you are in your career. I don't care if you are uh, newly graduated, you haven't even graduated yet, you're mid-career, you're you know, anything. You have to have presence on LinkedIn. That's where every company is. That's where every recruiter goes to look. You want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is aligned with, but not identical to your resume. You can even attach your resume as, as part of your profile. That's, that's perfectly fine. But you want to use, so there's a, there's a top portion, this about section, right? So it's similar to the summary that you're going to put in your, in your resume. But here's where you can take a little bit more license and be a little bit more authentic to your personality. Um, I find that LinkedIn summaries that tell a bit of a story around what you do, who you do it for, why you've made an impact and why you want to make an impact, you know, for your next employer tend to be very compelling and they tend to stand out um, versus, you know, sort of your plain Jane LinkedIn summary that says, I have X years of experience and this is what I've done and, you know, contact me for details. Um, and again, just like a headline on your resume, you want to use a very compelling headline on your LinkedIn profile that highlights what you want to be known for, what you want recruiters and companies to seek you out for. And again, in the work experience section, you wanna focus on accomplishments, not on tasks. So let me take a pause there because I think out of the corner of my eye, I saw some questions. Okay, so Stephen asked, what are your thoughts on using a video profile to help introduce and promote yourself? Stephen, I think that's a fantastic idea. 
LinkedIn has a great um, uh, spot uh, within the profile for you to house something like that. So you can put it into your, uh, when you do the summary, there's an opportunity to have links. So what I have done, and I have videos on my LinkedIn profile as well, they're out on YouTube, and then I just link out to the video. So a video profile, um, it's, it's not quite a standard yet. And that is such a great example of something that's going to help you stand out in the sea of candidates, because so few people are doing that. And especially in this virtual environment, like I said, where some people are, you know, you're going through those first steps of trying to get the right companies to notice you. Video is going to be a great way to stand out and infuse more of your personality because rather than a two dimensional resume, they can now see you, they can hear you, they can kind of get a little bit more idea of your warmth and your personality. So I think that's a that's a fantastic idea. Um, I talked a little bit about your 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 second question about how different the LinkedIn profile should be versus your resume. Um, again, they should be compatible, but they shouldn't be identical. So especially in the summary section, the work experience can generally be the same, but I would take a little bit more poetic license in the summary and really let your personality come out. Uh, should cover letters be paragraph based or combined with bullets? Um, my kind of best practice style is a combination of both. So an introductory paragraph, which again can be very templatized, and then um, a, a few bullets that really kind of itemize and summarize um, how your qualifications meet the qualifications that they're looking for. And that's where you wanna be really careful um, and thoughtful about using the word they use in their job description. So great, great questions. All right, cool. So you've applied and now you got an interview. So now what do you do? Okay. You've probably heard uh, the, the concept of the elevator pitch. The, all these things in the interview, and I've done more interviews than I care to remember because so many candidates walk in there and wing it. And unless you are super charismatic and totally know, you know, are, are so self-aware and so authentic that you can walk into any conversation and just own the room, you're not going to stand out. So you don't, you know, th this is really an opportunity for you. And, and sometimes, again, this could be a, you know, a Zoom-based interview. You may not actually be in the room, but it's a re it is really important for you to be confident in what you offer and also show interest in them. I'll come right back to that. So an elevator pitch is a, a slightly more detailed version of the high-level summary that you've got in your, uh, in your, in your resume. Me. This is your opportunity. It's either your opening statement or your closing statement, right? So it's it's usually you, you kind of know when to pull that out because the recruiter will say something like, "Tell us a little bit about yourself." Or at the very end, if they haven't gone there yet, their their sort of closing question to you is going to be, um, "You know, is there anything else that we should know about you?" That's when you pull out the good old elevator pitch. And many many candidates get this wrong because they don't prepare this. So you want to present your case for why your unique skills, your experience, and your personality are the right fit to help them advance their mission. And this sounds silly, but you want to rehearse it in front of the mirror a few times. You want to get to the point where you're not literally trying to recite it, you're not reading it off of your notepad, but that you're delivering it naturally and authentically, okay? So that's where that authenticity comes back in. The other thing that so many candidates miss, and if you can't tell, it's a pet peeve of mine because I can't stand helping a company interview a candidate who hasn't prepared. Um, you wanna research the company and the role that you're applying for before you go into that interview. That's gonna help you tweak your elevator pitch, right? So that you can speak to their specific mission, but it's also gonna help you ask questions that show that you did your homework. Every single interviewer is going to ask you at some point, usually at the end, if you have any questions for them. You always should have at least one insightful question that you can ask. And don't just ask, how much vacation time would I get, right? You want to ask something that is about their business, about the impact that they make, about their mission. Do your homework. It's not going to take you hours, but it's going to equip you with that one zinger question that I guarantee you recruiters are going to go, wow, they... Every time I get feedback from a hiring manager, 
the candidate or candidates who stand out to them are the ones they always say, this one asked good questions. That's how you're gonna stand out. The other thing that's going to help you vault ahead of a lot of candidates in the pile is a thank you note. That may sound very antiquated, and it is. It's a lost art, and so many candidates miss that. And you know why it's so much easier to do that now in a virtual environment? Because you don't have to take out your old flowery stationery, handwrite a note, put it in the mail, and risk COVID going to the post office. You send it as an email literally the same day as soon as you finish your interview or as soon as, as practical. You, you want to thank them for their time. You want to reemphasize your interest in the role. And you want to point out again, even in a couple of bullets, why you are uniquely qualified to help make a positive impact and help them move the needle toward their mission. These sound so simple, but when you start to piece all of those things together, these are the winning formula, literally, that are going to make you stand out in a sea of candidates. Let me just pause for a second because I do think there's another question. Okay, any tips on how to approach interviews when re-entering the job market? Yeah, okay. Um, short corporate hiatus, childcare. You know, Catherine, there are, um, there used to be a, I'm gonna call it a stigma, right? Um, on uh, people that have gaps in their resume, Ooh, the dreaded gap, right? Um, that they, they took time off for whatever reason. There was an illness in the family. They had a child. Um, they traveled. They were laid off and they didn't get you know, another job um, in a short period of time. There are so many candidates now that have gaps. Um, I typically advise candidates not to explain the gap on a, on a, in their resume. Um, depending on the situation, I will advise um, people to explain it very high level, very briefly in the cover letter where it doesn't dominate the entire story. And one of the things that I recommend is when you sort of address that elephant in the room, first of all, it's a bigger elephant to you than it is to them, um, you know, in, in, in this day and age. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you because a lot of people have gaps. And, you know, when you, when you talk about it, you can just say, you know, very briefly, I stepped away from my career for, you know, uh, family reasons or, or whatever. But during that time, here's what I did. And, you know, very, very briefly, you might have taken a course, you might have done some other self-improvement. Um, even if you did nothing, there's always something you can say about how you spent that time, even though you stepped away from corporate or from your job or from the career search or what have you, there's always something you can include that shows that you didn't let the grass grow under your feet, right? Um, reach out to me if you want to talk about that more specifically. That's a great question though. So as you start to, to apply these tips and hone in on the key words you want to incorporate into your resume, into your cover letter, into your elevator pitch, here's another insider secret for you. There are two skills that every company needs, but very few candidates know to highlight. So I'm going to tell you these because you are going to be able to um, bring them into your resume, into your cover, cover letter, and into your elevator pitch in ways that are going to help you stand out. Anybody just drop me a heck yeah if, you, if you're interested in that. I mean, if you don't, if you don't want to stand out, if you're just here because, you know, we're all fair and we just want to bond, that's totally fine. Yes, Gabriella has a, is a, is a yes. I need a heck yeah here for this. Cool. Okay. So two skills you want to, <laughs> Thomas is LOL. Thank you, Thomas. I love to make you laugh. Um, two mission critical skills resilience and adaptability. If, if this era of COVID that we are in has not highlighted anything else, it's that companies that did not have resilience and companies that could not adapt to our new reality did not succeed. And the same goes for candidates, right? So literally incorporating these two words somewhere in your resume, somewhere in your cover letter, somewhere in your LinkedIn profile, and somewhere in your elevator pitch is already going to make you stand out. Now, don't just put them in there and hope that the, you know, the, the web crawler uh, on Indeed is going to pick you out as the standout candidate, but you know, showing that you are resilient, 
and showing that you are adaptable are, are absolute mission critical skills for every single company now. So you wanna make sure that you answer that unasked question that yes, you have resilience, yes, you have adaptability. And there are ways to bring that into the conversation in, in, in an interview as well. Questions on that? People are loving it. Oh, I love that you love, I love the love. These skills are part of why you got your current job, Susan Palmer, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, companies have, have learned this the hard way um, this year who were, who were so, you know, not prepared um, for, for COVID. I mean, let's face it, none of us were, were prepared for the magnitude of, you know, a global pandemic. But candidates themselves, the candidates that can demonstrate resilience and adaptability, you are absolutely going to, to stand out, um, you know, in this, in this sea of candidates. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that feedback. Okay. So all of this, your personal brand, your resume, your interview elevator pitch, the next role you ultimately land, all of it, all of it depends on your ability to truly know who you are and what you offer, right? So that's that self-awareness piece and your confidence in letting your true self out, which is that authenticity piece. Dr. Seuss, I think, says it way better than I ever could when he says, today you are you, that is truer than true. There was no one alive who was you than you. And just because you're looking for a job, just because you're looking to go work for someone else, even if it's in corporate, even if it's in corporate banking, does not mean you have to stuff yourself into a box and not let your personality out. So get creative, be innovative, have fun and be yourself. Not just in your job search, but throughout your entire career, you are going to be far more successful and feel far more fulfilled if you play in your genius zone. And I literally mean play because when you are in your zone, doing your thing and getting paid to do what you love, it feels a lot like play. Questions? Anybody want some hot seat coaching? Gosh, that sounded intimidating. Does anyone want some live right on the spot coaching? Anyone have a very specific, um, situation or point in your search where you're just feeling stuck or um, you know could could use a, a, a talking through I'm I am more than uh, inviting you uh, and welcoming you to come off of mute and chat with me for a minute or two if you would like Amanda come on off mute come on down you are our <laughs> first contestant Thank you so much. Can you hear me? How are you? I, I good, can hear good. you loud and clear. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Thank you so much. This is awesome. One of the things I thought of right away when you said, um, you know, uh, to the question about acknowledging a hiatus of some sort in childcare mm -hmm. or in job, um, is that I have, you know, kind of stepped away due to childcare since June. Um, you know, school closed, camp closed, and I was the one who kind of picked up that slack. But during that period, I did a, really solve that problem in that, you know, I have created a pod with three other families and we've hired a teacher and it's pretty outside the box in terms of what a lot of our peers are doing here. And I wonder if, is that too personal to talk about when I talk about, okay, as you said, when you talk about the hiatus, talk about what you did during that time. I mean, putting this pod together was, you know, a ton of work and research and, you know, creativity and all of that. Is that, but it, but it's personal, right? I did it for my child. Is that too personal to talk about? So uh, uh, first of all, I love that. I'm sitting here like, I wish I had a job to hire you in because that just sounds <laughs> so resourceful and so collaborative right and so um yeah and so just inventive all the things that that you know that people need and companies want um so let me ask you because i i don't remember if you dropped into the chat earlier um what what are you what are you looking for in the next role what are some of the what are some of the skills that you want to put to use yeah i really want to do um i want to continue work that i've done in project management um and i want to you know, perhaps take a role in a, a little bit of a different industry or arena, but I want to be a project manager. I want to 
to be someone who solves problems, which is why I think this is a good example. We had this problem of how to get our first grader in education um, full time, right? The hybrid thing didn't work for us. The virtual didn't work for us. Right. And I think it's an example of problem solving, which is something I want to do. I in my next role, I I I want to. I do want to do something different than I was doing before. I want to really expand my project management role. Okay. So, and, and even though it's a personal example of putting together this pod with three families, um, it, it very clearly and adeptly to me anyway, illustrates your project management and your problem solving skills. Um, the way that I would do that is I'm a little bit on the fence of whether to that whether to advise you to put it in the resume. If you mm -hmm. did, I would put it into a you know additional experience section. Sure. Um, right. Not make it like your current work experience. No, no. But I would definitely include it in the cover letter. Got it. Um, and I would you know so the when uh, I was answering before you know do do you do paragraphs do you do do you do bullets. This would be an example of you know you kind of do your leading your opening paragraph is like you know please to please to apply to exposition and you know blah 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 and this is what i offer and here's here's just a few examples of how my experience lines up with your you know with what you're looking for kind of thing um, one of those bullets and probably you know one of the very first ones because it's so recent is literally program management uh, excuse me project management and problem solving mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. brief description of you know here was here was the problem right and and no one is going to say what are you talking about? Was was right. education impacted? Like I don't understand. Like, right. Were, were people not at school this year? What did I miss? Right. So right. everybody knows that it was a problem. Everybody knows it's still a problem. And everybody, without exception, knows at least one person struggling with this. Yeah. So I would absolutely use that as a um, as a very real world, very real time example of what you can do, even in your quote unquote hiatus. Great. Thank you so much. That's super helpful. You're welcome. I that's congratulations to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe put you in touch with my sister-in-law because yeah. she's struggling with this. <laughs> she's got free. two boys in feel school free. and oh it's it's crazy. No, it's great, rough. great question. I feel, I feel for everybody, it's rough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so so much. Thank you. Um anybody else, anybody else have any questions? Want to want to come on come off of mute? Go in the go in the hot seat. It wasn't too grueling. Amanda survived. going once. Oh, I think Stephanie came off mute. Hello, Stephanie. Where are you calling from? I feel like we're on a we're on a call in show now. This is great. <laughs> it's like, um, who wants to be a millionaire? For a I know. Phone <laughs> a friend, right? This is great. <laughs> uh, thank you for hosting this. It's been lovely. Oh, sure. Um, I am just curious. So I've been working the last 10 years in financial services. And I'm exploring moving like taking my skills, but moving into a new industry. Um, you know, still in maybe a finance capacity, but I wanted to know if there are certain things to do with your resume or your LinkedIn profile that can show that you're, you know, versatile in moving industries versus people seeing just like one way street for you. Yeah, great question. Um, and thank you for coming off of mute to ask it. You know, th this is where your, your keywords um, really come in handy because spending 10 years in financial services could potentially pigeonhole you if that's all a recruiter sees, right? Um, so the way that you um, sort of dilute that pigeonhole quality uh, or that, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a one trick pony, so to speak. And I'm, you know, I'm a super specialist in finance to, to the exclusion of anything else. Um, one of the ways that you kind of mitigate that is in the, in the summary itself, and in the, the headline, right? The headline is gonna be the biggest, boldest, uh, typically all caps line on your resume, um, typically on your LinkedIn profile as well, it does not have to be identical. So let me just focus on the resume um, headline. Most people who have been in financial services for 10 years are going to play that up in their headline. What you are saying is I've got these skills, they're transferable and I wanna kind of downplay a little bit that it's all been in financial services because I feel like I could, you know, bring my skills to bear somewhere else. So what I would do is absolutely mention your financial acumen and your financial accomplishments. Um, because in my experience, a lot of candidates have zero financial acumen at all. 
So you were going to be, um, you know, to me, you're going to have an advantage over other candidates, even in a non-finance focused position, because you have such a firm grasp on financial concepts and, you know, just, <laughs> just the implications of decisions, right, day to day on a business from a financial perspective. So going back to some of that research, doing some of your homework, looking at some of the job descriptions that appeal to you, some of the companies that appeal to you, look at their, you know, I keep saying keywords, but look at the vocabulary they use, right? How do they describe some of the job descriptions that appeal to you? And how can you bring, um, you know, I wouldn't revamp your resume based on one job description, but as you start to look through ones that appeal to you, you're going to start to see common themes and common threads. And so you want to bring some of those keywords into your summary, into how you describe what you've done, um, and, and find a way, come up with a headline for your resume that is not finance focused, right? Uh, uh, you know, well, well experienced financial executive with, you know, a proven track record, like don't, yeah, don't, don't go there, right? So it's really about, it's about the keywords. Um, and I would, that's where your, your homework and looking through several job descriptions um, until you start to see some of the trends that pull you in um, then you're going to, you're, you're going to have a better feel for what words to use. Was that helpful? Yes. Thank you so much. Awesome. You are very welcome. Okay. Uh, we are coming up on the top of the hour. We've got time for one more quick question. If anybody else has one that is just burning in their gut. That sounded very ulcerous, didn't it? Okay. Seeing none. We are going to close this out. So I want to thank you for keeping, uh, keeping me company tonight. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope you feel a little bit more confident about your next steps. If you want a little bit more confidence, um, if you would like my help in creating you know, your, your personal branding, your career candidate materials, I do have a special offer. This is not a sales presentation, but I want to at least you know, give you an opportunity to, to continue the conversation with me. Um, I typically offer a, a career branding package where um, we very quickly unlock your, your self-awareness and your authenticity, which again are those two traits that all genius level performers share. We have a 90 minute one-on-one -on -one coaching session. So similar to just the quick questions I just answered now, um, we, we go much more in depth specifically on where you're stuck, where you wanna go and how we close that gap. Um, taking not just taking that magic two-step message formula that, that I mentioned earlier, but literally customizing it and writing it for you and rebuilding your resume, your cover letter, your LinkedIn profile, and crafting your, your interview elevator pitch. Um, so normally that's a, that's a $2,500 package, but this is Fairfield. I love Fairfield. I would do anything for Fairfield. So tonight I'm giving you a coupon code for the Fairfield U friends and family rate of $1,000 instead of $2,500. Uh, the coupon code is once a stag. Coupon does expire at the end of the year. So if you are interested in grabbing that offer, just go to my website, which is clairechandler.net. There's a link uh, toward the top right that says talk to Claire and you wanna book the 90 minute power session. So if that's of interest to you, I'm not gonna dwell on that. Again, this is not a sales presentation, but wanted to just put that offer out there. Um, and that's it. Wanted to thank you. If you have any other questions as you're kind of going along in your job search, my email is up top there, claire at talentboost.net. Um, feel free to give me a shout. And uh, I wish you the, the very best. I think if you put these, these, uh, these principles and these tips uh, in use and really do your homework and really get um, you know, more self-aware of, of where you wanna go and what you offer, uh, you're gonna do great. And you're gonna, you're gonna find the, the right next role for you. So I want to thank you. And then Colleen, I will turn it back to you to close us out. Thank you. And thank you so much, Claire, again, for giving your time. Greatly appreciated. Lots of great tips. I'm glad there was so much interactive questioning going on. Um, for some people have asked, I know they have friends who had registered and were unable to make it tonight. Claire was kind enough to let us record tonight's webinar. So we will be sharing that. So if you attended and would like to see it again, you can email us um, back to the confirmation email that was sent to you yesterday, um, which is just alumni at fairfield.edu. And of course, please connect with Claire. 
um, again, if she can continue to offer her services and hopefully we will see you all in person at an event soon. So thank you. <laughs>